Live from Dancing, it's the mouthpiece with Where'd he go? I'm here. <laughs> I made it. Sorry, I had to use the bathroom real quick. Just kidding. Uh, guys, how are we doing? How are we feeling? How are Woo! we feeling? I'm Jacked super pumped. Up today. I'm super pumped because it is uh, the lead up to the Super Bowl. This is the Super Bowl extravaganza Let's show. Let's go. Let's go. Could be more pumped. Malik, are you hyped or what? Oh, yeah, of course, man. You know I'm amped up on these balls over here. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I know, dude. I'm not kidding. I think I had too many. My heart's beating through my chest. I don't feel uh, good. <laughs> we have an awesome show for you guys. I'm super pumped. A lot of things to talk about. Uh, so much to build up. Uh, so much with Media Row. Kyle Shanahan was a little buzz at his presser. Let's talk about that. Uh, Pat Mahomes got asked about his dad. Whoops-a-daisy. And Barstool's busting with the boys. Will Compton and Taylor Lewin got into it with the number 13 and Taylor Swift. And will it affect the Super Bowl? I guess we'll find out, right? But we'll see. Also, with our Super Bowl picks and maybe some prop bets. Right, fellas? Yes. We'll we also, also the great thing about our show is you never know who's going to pop in. We have a very special guest. Uh, but we're gonna have to, you're going to have to stick around and find out who that is. But with that said... Let me, uh, let me uh, talk to my boys here. My Super Bowl team, the guys that helped me with the mouthpiece, to the left of me, uh, he's our special teamer. He's our all-pro. He's, uh, he's all Chiefs today. He's all Chiefs. Well, guys, Chiefs all the time. Yeah, he's Chiefs all the time. <laughs> Give for Chiefs Chris Mano, time. everyone. Give for Chris Mano. Let's go. Super Good excited. I'm always excited Good to be to here. Nice for hey. Always yeah. excited to be here. Yeah. Never more excited than right now. Yeah, you I'm, are, I'm you are our all-pro. We appreciate you having me here. Appreciate that. Uh, next to him, he is our Mr. UFC. He's fantastic. He has the best chest hair this side of the 95. Yeah, yeah that's right. I'm not, I'm not wearing it today. Yep. I'm sorry. He's got I'm the chain out. He's a, he's a yeah. stunt double for the Sopranos. Guys, good for Ray Sherwood. Where's the gabagool? <laughs> next to him over here behind the computer, he's the man, the myth, the legend. He's Cleveland's very own Malik Hudson. Let's go, Malik. Let's go, Malik. Free Pat Mahomes Sr. Good to see you. Guys, with that said, uh, we're pumped for the Super Bowl, right? We're yes. all excited for the Super Bowl. We're ready. Yes, yes. Yeah. Couldn't be more excited. Uh, are we are we gonna drink for the Super Bowl? Are we drinking? Are we having a lot of food? Are we going to? A, do we have any plans for the Super Bowl? I feel like isn't it isn't the Super Bowl kind of like the there, it should be a holiday the following day? Everyone's getting drunk, partying. Everyone's having a great time. Yeah, except for so. grownups have to go to work, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, well, people have made a push. You know, people have made a push to slide it back a weekend because, like, I think after next weekend's President's Day always. I think so. That would that's that's been like a, in in the yeah. I don't think a lot of people have President's Day in the queue, if you will, for yeah. <laughs> for the next day to have the day off. Yeah. I think I think what is it? Isn't it New Year's New Year's Day is like the most hungover? Day probably yeah. the most call outs, right? Yeah, but I think Super Bowl is pretty much second. It's right, be I second. Or they've been talking about moving the Super Bowl to Saturday, maybe giving that a run one time. Super Bowl Saturday because you have plenty of time to prep if you're the teams, yeah, with two weeks. So, yeah, run it back, run it on Saturday, yeah, and let's and see and how we do. I think that's a great awesome. idea, that'd be yeah. cool, right? That is that actually makes more sense because then you can be nice and hungover on Sunday, yeah, yeah. Well, or just keep the party going if you come from where I come from. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but let's hey, with that said, Media Row was uh, was great, it's everything and anything you possibly want from, from athletes, from celebrities to. This, I saw this little kid that was 11 years old that uh, had some sort of medical defect, but now he's like the number one reporter. He's yeah, got a incredible. huge following on uh, on YouTube, and I just think it's great because all walks of life go to Media Row, and they can ask questions to their favorite athletes and celebrities. But the one thing that I saw that stood out to me that I thought was hilarious uh, was Kyle Shanahan, <laughs> Shanahan, the coach from the San Francisco 49ers. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't know if getting wasted as a coach and then taking on questions from the media is a good look, but from sports guys like me that report on this, it's fantastic. Malik, can you please show it? <laughs> yeah, we got him. Uh, he, he was out the night before. Yeah, he was out the night before. He was getting all lit up. But I, th I don't know if he's he in was Vegas. Getting, he's having a good I time. Know, that's, you know what I mean? The problem with Vegas is I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing to have these things in Vegas. I got it. You got it. Okay. Look at him. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa. What was hold that? On. You got to go back picture. to that. Malik, rewind. Can you rewind that? <laughs> Look at him. This is whoever got this shot. By the way, he got in trouble, and I hope it's not an athlete. He looks like Kirk Cousins uh, well, on the plane. He just needs some chains. <laughs> dude, dude, Christy. <laughs> give, him, give this man some that. gold chains. Yo, that's your coach. He looks like a beastie boy, dude. Straight up. <laughs> He's not me. No, I'm Andy Reid. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he, but here's the thing. I no. don't. You think I, Andy Reid's doing that right? No, no, no he's, he's shooting a commercial for State Farm is what he's doing. Look, this is what I think. He's grabbing some nuggies. Real time. 
talk. I don't care at all about the coach. I'd be much more interested and much more excited if it was McCaffrey wrecked yeah. or Kittle wrecked. One of these <laughs> yeah. guys. Nick yeah, Bosa out yeah. smashed. As a Chiefs person, I, that that interests me far more than. I don't care. This guy's got plenty of time to recover. This is of course, but I'm yeah. saying. I guess Funny, you know what. I sure. guess you know what. I mean, coming from your head coach, you want your head coach to be out partying because, like, I listen. I think it's a good time. Everyone's there to have a good time, but don't you save the good time for when you celebrate a win? Well, that's the crazy thing about coaches now in the league too. So many of them are like mid thirties. Yeah, that they're more like peers than they are like um, right, right, like. like um, it, mentors and stuff like that, like Sean McVay, younger than some of his players. Yeah, you know a lot of these guys are getting these jobs. Mike McDaniel's right. down you don't here. See, you don't see Bill Belichick. Nah, doing Andy Reid will not no. be caught you know what out I'm there saying? doing Can that. Can you catch no. Andy Reid with his shirt off <laughs> <laughs> at like at Hakkasan? <laughs> Just you know, get lit up. <laughs> you know what he's doing though? He's taste testing the champagne he, for the yep. celebration of the win after Sunday. Yeah, that's what he's doing. He's preparing. How many it? did he test? <laughs> like, he's going the yeah. roundabout over around the yeah. world over here. <laughs> did someone have to tap on the shoulder and say, "Yo, dude"? Uh, we have a game after this. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, speaking of Media Rail is fantastic. You never know what's going to happen. You, have, you get to ask so many random questions, which is which is good and bad. Uh, Pat Mahomes fielded this question f about his dad, and I want your guys' reaction to see how would you take it. Yeah, my, um, he's doing good. Uh, I haven't, don't really want to get into it too much, but um, um, he's doing good for, for whatever the, the situation is. <laughs> What? I can't say that one more time. Yeah, I would, every time I get in He's even acknowledging it, too. So he's um, handling it. It's a very family matter, so I'll just keep it to the family. Um, and that's all I really have to say at this point. Yeah, what do you think he's going to say? Thanks, Malik. Yeah. What do you think he's going to say? He's like, you know what, my dad, uh, he likes the booze. Yeah. <laughs> he was out with Kyle Shanahan last night. What do you want to do? You know what I mean? Look, a, a couple things. So he's yeah. incredibly prepared for all these, which is a good thing. He knew, everybody knew, there was a 100% chance he was going to get that question. So he knew exactly what he was going to say. He handled it beautifully. And look, it's, it's very important that he handled it like that because if you give your opponents the idea that something bothers you, yeah. you already know that if he showed that that pissed him off, Fred Warner, a, a monster like Dre Greenlaw, these guys are going to say after the first snap, hey, your dad's a drunk, and they're going to try to get him mad. So you got to handle it like that. He handled it exactly like I thought he would have, and he knew, like I said, they're prepped for all that. He knew there was a, a, a no-brainer that he was going to get that question. Let me ask you a question, though. This day and age uh, in the NFL, I mean, I know trash talking is still, you know, a huge part of the game, but is it as? Do you think, as an ex-player, is it still pretty it, aggressive as it, it, as it's always been? Nothing off limits, and yes, never more than it's been. There's now there's guys who you know. It may not be all 22 out there, but you know a couple. I mean, I was out there against Terrell Suggs, right, dude. I mean, the mouth did not stop moving. The guy never stopped moving. Same with Warren Sapp. Yeah, these guys just never stop. And his stopped. brother. You're like, talking yeah. about his brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. By the like, way, we found out that's not his yeah. brother, bro. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> I wanted it to be. We did our a lot of people it. thought so, yeah. right? Dude, we got I'm grilled not the on only that. one guy. I'm, I'm, like, point the I'm brother, not going to point dude. the elbows, but. Uh, uh. <laughs> Jesus. Barry, Barry, what did you say his name was? Bob Sapp. Bob Sapp. Rob Sapp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Rob Sapp. He was an extra He was an extra for Carl Weathers and Rocky. Jesus, dude. Big for that. I don't know. So also, do do people talk? People talk. Yeah, there he is. Look at this guy. I love guy. how he had to come up in discussion today. Look at him, dude. He looks like Debo from uh, from Friday. Yeah, he's an easy. Oh, he Doesn't he? He, he looks no. huge. Yeah. You don't think he does? He looks like Mario Pujanowski, but black. Yeah, he does. He does. <laughs> Who look knows a Mario like Pujanowski? World's strongest, world's strongest man, man from man. Poland, yeah. man. Come oh, on, shit, come mind. on. Who doesn't know that? Well, of course, my fault. Yeah, I walked. <laughs> I walked into that. <laughs> like I should know that. <laughs> Darn it, you guys got me. You don't know Robert Pujanowski? <laughs> His name is <laughs> Mario Pujanowski. Pujanowski. Sounds like a guy that's on the Food Network. Who's like he's a, he specializes Tommy in pastas. Listener. Yeah, that's that's uh, Debo. Yeah, that's see, they that, kind of look the that's same. That's the real Debo. That's what I said. They look the same. I thought it was Forrest Whitaker uh, with the eyes. Oh no, oh, of course that's too soon. <laughs> no, that's too soon. No, that's way too soon. No. Ray, let me ask you a question. In UFC, do they still? Do they? I mean, I know trash talking is part of the UFC big time, right? Who do you think is the best trash talker in the UFC? Conor I mean, McGregor, right? I, uh, I want to say probably outside, you'd either have McGregor or Chael Sonnen. Nate Diaz or I was is gonna really say, good. Yeah, was, oh, no, yeah. no, 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 Nate Diaz during the fight. Nate oh, yeah. Diaz is an intellectual trash talker by any means. During the fight, he talks a lot of shit. He's like so, a walking dead zombie during the fights. He just keeps coming he's like forward, a Homer keeps getting punched in the head. Who'd you say? 
Nate, Nate Diaz. Diaz. Oh, yeah. Well, he's yeah. the biggest trash talker Nate also, inside Nate the octagon. Nate also does this to your face, right, as he's After, fighting. He no, slaps he'll, guys. He's slapped and slaps he doesn't guys. Even, he yeah. doesn't even throw punches. He yeah. slaps. Yeah. He's actually a very iconic photo was, you know, Leon Edwards, the current Walter Wade champion of the world. Uh, he fought Nate Diaz, beat him up for five rounds straight. The last minute, Nate Diaz, boom, straight right, catches him, rocks him. Instead of charging after him and finishing the fight, he just goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> and just takes the L Yo. and then gets his up. When they raise Leon Edwards' hand, he raises his hand and walks away so like he great. won. Yeah, and, it's exa and that's why he sells pay-per-views, too. Yeah. Like that's, he was the perfect uh, opponent for Conor at the time. Right, yeah. He was the only one who can kind of verbally jab back and forth with him and that yeah. was awesome and he kind of ever since then they can only count it. to five lots of, <laughs> lots amazing, of things right? listen to lots of things to look forward to especially you know lead up to the super bowl all the trash talk with media row one thing that i thought was really cool is everyone has their um their idea about superstitions i'm a big superstitious guy i listen we don't say conspiracy theories around here or truth whatever but uh there's something too about the number 13 which happens to be my favorite number that it happens to be Taylor Swift's favorite number. I don't know what that means. I'm not in the Illuminati, I'm, but um, <laughs> don't never said she was either. <laughs> All right. um, but with that said, I thought this was really cool. I love the guys that bust them with the boys, Will and Taylor. They broke this down the other day when they were uh, having a little fun, having some drinks and playing cards. Kick it. Yeah, it was with Burt Kreischer and uh, Tom Se Segura, right? Look at that outfit. I got to dress like that. About Taylor Swift? You know what her favorite number Turned is? Turned up. Nope. My favorite number is 13. You know what Super Bowl this is? Super no. Bowl 58. What's well, 5 plus 8? 13. If Taylor Swift makes this game, it'll be her 13th appearance at a Chiefs game. This is the date of this Super Bowl is 2 11. What's 2 plus 11? 13. Shout out now JP. Now she has to be in Tokyo, okay. like you said. Do you know what the time duration is from Tokyo to Las Vegas, Nevada? 13 hours. The 49ers. What's 4 plus 9, by the way? Yeah, here. 13. There you the 49ers JP. Are, are what seed? Is that JP? The seed. Shout out to JP. <laughs> <laughs> They're the one seed. What are the Chiefs? The three. The three seed. What number is that? 13. And if you were to take 13 away from 100, what would you get? You would get 87. Now, you might think that's written in the stars. I've got the 49ers winning this game, and I've got them covering. <laughs> wow. What do you guys think about that? Malik, do you, have, do you think there's any truth to that at all? Uh, I know all my numerology folks out there are going crazy and probably eating this up. But I feel like uh, I wouldn't think that deeply into it. But that is pretty wild. That I mean, but, the, but I mean, to think about it, like everyone talks about planets and they talk about stars and horoscopes and everything. <laughs> like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like Mercury's Mer Mer in retrograde. And <laughs> Aquarius like season is going like, crazy. Off. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, is there some sort of weird kind of, um, I don't know, there's something to that. Don't you think there's something that, Chris, you, are, you're not a superstitious guy or where do you think with all that? Um, see, I was never a big believer in anything like this before, but it's almost getting too hard to totally eliminate it. I was listening to Aaron Rodgers and Joe Rogan last night. They were touching on, like, the Simpsons and how they've always been able to kind of, like, predict these things. It's been weird. Like, I was never on board, like, the first probably 30 years of my life, and the last couple, I'm almost like, maybe it warrants a little bit of, you know, attention. So, I don't know. Probably a little bit bigger than it should be. Obviously, the Taylor Swift thing is always going to be huge, but... Right. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. Right I'm in the air. Anything? What do you got? I mean, uh, it's, Aquari it it's Aquarius season, but you know, everyone, it's Aquarius season. Ev everyone's going crazy, so it's the age of Aquarius. Th there, there's something to be said about Taylor Lewan's, uh, you know, at, at least insight. So there's something weird that's going to happen this Sunday, and I'll, I'm I'm here for it. I think we're all here for it. Well, guess what? I'm also here for the best part of the whole show. I mean, besides us talking about the number thirteen. Uh, <laughs> I'm very excited uh, to have a very special guest pop in and rap with us about the Super Bowl and the questions that we have, not just about Taylor Swift, right? The actual game itself, the matchups, the hype, the before and after of the game. Uh, he's a very special guest. He's a 10-year NFL vet. He's a key contributor for the Bengals and the Falcons. He's a former third-round pick out of Rutgers University and a guy that knows what it takes to play in the big game. We have Mohamed Sanu on the show. Yeah, yes, let's go. But before we bring Muhammad on, before we bring Muhammad on, before you guys, before we bring him on, I'm so excited. Let's just show a yes. little bit Run of his highlight clip of what our guy can do on the field. Yes, that's a super. Watch Bowl this pick. man work. Watch this guy work. Here we go. You can watch us too. Yeah, you can watch us. <laughs> I Look promise he's better. Watch this, guys. Here we go. Look at Ray. Look at this guy. Here he goes. 
I mean, the hands so, on him too. Is so incredible. that's actually the that's craziest incredible. part. So that's Muhammad throwing a touchdown. Like the kid is such a football Julio, player. Right? Yeah. yeah. He was, I, I, you know what? It's funny because I was like, that's not Muhammad. Check this out. So look, look at that. Also, he fumbled the ball too. Well, here's the deal. So Mo has a perfect career passer rating of 158.3, that's and incredible. he plays receiver. Right. Like this kid is a football player wow, in every sense that. of the word. That's, it, that's, it, also, that's, it, right on the, that's right on the dime. Right? That's He's the perfect. Dime. Right on the numbers he, was right there. he was a quarterback. Rutgers, he messed yeah. around with the Wildcat quarterback. Why are you going to yeah, do this sure. against my Bears? Why are you going to do this against my Bears? It, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Watch the next one. Next one. He's sick. a stud. And he's out. Yak forever. That a boy, Mo. Keep going. Wow. Keep going, Mo. Keep going, Mo. Look at that. He's got those strides. Dude, he's got catch. some wheels. What was Mo's 40? Do you know? Fast. Okay, just yeah. fast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. No, he was incredible, man. When I got on campus at IMG and just started working with him, so polished and NFL ready, like right out of college, man. Look at him. There he is. Go ahead, Mo. It's one thing to catch the ball. It's another thing to... Uh, to break tackle and also to juke. Well, he's a dudes. big kid, too. You probably don't yeah. realize because he's amongst other big guys. But Moe's like, I think Moe is probably 6'2", 210, 215 when he played. Yeah, you can see he stands out. Oh, he's a stud. Absolute stud. He almost looks like Fantastic. a tight end. Yep. <laughs> what do you say we bring him in? Let's go. Let's, Let's bring go, Mo. I can't wait. Yeah, I've been, dude, I'm excited to talk to him. Same. I mean, he's been one of the best receivers in the league for so long. And it's, it's nice to talk to one of your heroes for once, you know. Yeah, he's a great dude, too. Yeah, after he diced up the Bears, right? Well, I mean, we'll talk about that, too, which is not cool. If you can't beat him, join him, right? For sure. I, you're like, I like him outside of the Bears. I mean, you know what, though? Everyone carves up the Bears, dude. Yeah, that's just the way it goes, up. which sucks. Everyone carves up the damn Bears, but that's all right. Yeah, man, that Atlanta Falcons offense at the time was, like, oh, yeah. insane. Well, yeah, Ryan, Leaf was, Gonzalez, Ryan Leaf was their Jones, quarterback in the Super Bowl, that's, too. Yep. It's a hard, like, team to cover. Everybody's big. Everybody's athletic. And he also was that they had a good um, running back, Devontae, Devontae Freeman, Freeman too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and yeah. guess who? Guess who? The team he's on now, the Bears. Oh, he is he is? really? <laughs> he's like the third string and, running and, back, right? Yeah, but he actually he did pretty good for us this year. And actually, actually yeah, and actually, the head coach of that team is a head coach out of my university who just got the head coaching job, uh, a most recent head coaching job with the uh, Washington Commanders, Dan Quinn. I heard that. Yeah, so. Also, you know what's funny about that is um, Parsons, or was it Parsons they, on Media Road? They had he had no idea that Dan Quinn went to the Commanders. Did you know that? That was uh, it was somebody. It wasn't. I don't think it was Parsons. It was somebody though. Yeah, and I was like, these guys are so checked out in the off season. For man. sure, some of them don't even. They don't have any idea no because That's also they're coach. partying and having a good time so like you know they're doing whatever they're doing for sure well we're gonna get uh we're gonna get mo on the show We'll get him on the show. We're just having a little bit, I think, technical difficulty, but uh that's okay. Hey, there he, there is. he is. is. My <laughs> man, There's Mr. Mo. mo. Can you see us? What's good, y'all? What's up, brother? Yo. How y'all doing? Looking Excellent. good. Hey, looking good. Can you see hey. us, dude? Yeah, I can see. There he is. Hey. Hey. There's Mo. Did you see hey, that highlight clip? Say that again. You see you your didn't... highlights? No, I didn't see that. Uh, oh, yeah. You see, I'm a die <laughs> Bears fan. I'm a die Bears fan. Mo. By the way, I'm Brady, by the way. You know Chris, and this is Ray and Malik behind the computer. Um, dude, we're so happy to have you on the show. Uh, We've just been watching your highlights and then reminiscing about you carving up my Bears, which I don't appreciate. <laughs> That's fine. But, man, we're so happy to have you on the show because we're excited to ask you all these all the uh, questions leading up to the Super Bowl. Chris has a couple questions. I'll let Chris lead it off because I know you guys have known each other for a long time, so we'd like to see this bromance. Uh, uh... Hey, first and foremost, man, thank you so much for the time. I know you're a busy man. I miss you terribly. You are the man, Mo. Dude, thank you. Uh, so, all right, so look, obviously you had the unique experience of playing in this big game. Completely different buildup from a normal week for us, right? More media, more distractions, more pressure. Two weeks sitting out. Uh, what don't we see? Like, what is something, anything that you could think of that we don't see that behind the curtain you guys are dealing with that's – that makes this, you know, these two weeks a little hairy. What's a distraction, Mo? What's a distraction? Uh, I mean, it's just a lot of, a lot of media, a lot of credential stuff that you have to wear, uh, a lot of stuff that you normally wouldn't have to do. Like, you always have certain processes that you may have to go through. And what about weird questions? The- Any weird questions? Anybody ask you something out of the out of the ordinary, and you're like. How do they know that about me? <laughs> you know I what mean, I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, Stuff like that's that. That's the crazy part. So much media. So much media. So they, they ask the crazy question. Give me a, give me a question. question. That's the thing. I, like, I, don't, I remember, I'm trying to remember like the weirdest one. I remember it was like, uh, it was like the local media from Rutgers. And I was asking, you know, a college question. I haven't thought about, you know, college. Right. For a minute, so it was just something that, you know, threw me off. But it was cool to 
see them come out there to represent, you know? Hey, Mo, hey, so you win the NFC title game and you probably all geared up around like Monday or Tuesday to get going. You still got 10 days before the show. How do you stay focused? How do you stay locked in? Because it's like, you know, when something important's coming, you're like, all right, I'm just ready to get this going, man. What is it that kind of keeps you zeroed in? Uh, you just try to like stay within the playbook. It's right. really strange because it's like it's so much time. Like usually it's like, I mean, it's, it's like a bye week, but it's not necessarily a bye week because you have to do all the media stuff. And right. Like, that media is a lot. Like people make I think it is. Some people don't like to talk. Some right. people don't like being in front of the camera. Hey, and and Some even th like showed up e even things that people don't recognize, like you got to get tickets for family and friends, right? Just extra crap. Yeah, that's that, the thing, though. Yeah. What's it? Like, the ticket, like they get you. You have access to buy fifteen tickets mm -hmm. because you still have to buy the tickets. Right. Like it's not. Yeah, like, people don't recognize that, right? They think you just get free no, tickets and you, you get, get um tickets, no. you get people out of the woodwork coming to get tickets from yeah. you, boys that boys that you knew from like high school yeah. and shit. You hey, know what I'm talking about? Like guys are like, I mean, yo, Mo, people, remember people, when I washed your car in ninety eight? You know, people will ask, but like right. it's not only only certain people that you <laughs> yeah. get the invite, yeah, you know. Yeah. Mo, you what have, do you do for nerves? What do you do for nerves? I mean, is is that a thing, or do you go work it out? Do you go yeah. out to eat? Do you hang yeah. with family? How does how do players? How do you control that? Because I know as a comedian, before I go on stage, I need to like I literally have to stretch it out before I go on stage. You know what I'm saying? So okay. like, what's yeah. your what was your regimen before you played the big game? I always kept it consistent. I don't really like get nervous in a sense because. I knew I was prepared regardless, you know, like I would prepare myself throughout the week. If I was prepared, I would be, if I wasn't like, oh, well, that's, that's my ass, you know, type of thing. Yeah. But I always made sure I was prepared. So when you played I against Tom really... Brady, when you played against Tom Brady, I'm sorry to cut you off. That's my yeah. fault. But when you played, cause I have so many questions for, her, I apologize. But when you played against Tom Brady, did he, when he saw his presence, like when you played for the Falcons and you saw him across the way, Right, and he's mm -hmm. standing there because you remember. I remember Jordan back in the day. He's kind of had the same kind of presence, chewing his gum, legs locked, just you know, staring at the opponent. Was Tom kind of that way? His demeanor when you guys played them in the Super Bowl? Of course. Yeah. yeah. Why wouldn't it be? Like it's like asking, like when you're going on stage and you're about to tell your best joke. Like, yeah. Are you not gonna have that confidence? For sure. Like, you're gonna have that confidence because that's what you prepared for. Like especially his experience being there like he wasn't shaking of how the game was going at all right and, so. and mo and it's kind of piggyback on that so you're up 28 to 3 like under normally mm -hmm. under normal circumstances it's like a foregone conclusion how this is going to go right but obviously like we said we got brady across the way what's the temperature like on your sideline are you guys chill are you guys still like it's zero zero keep this tight and was there a moment where you're like oh crap like this just took a turn, or is it kind of just like eh, slow and steady? Like, take me through the temperature of that sideline at the time. Uh, good says like everybody had their own emotions. Like, it's a lot of different people. It's trying to get everybody different perspective. I know I was just sitting there and, you know, trying to do what I do, my job. You know what I'm saying? I turn my guys on. I sit there, I have my confidence, and you keep your confidence because that's what your team teammates feed off of. You can't necessarily – do anything other, you know, because that's just uncharacteristic of you. So you just try to keep your team level headed or whatever the case may be. Yeah. And you're super you chill you're you're super chilled out like inside the framework of the game, but off the field you're kinda like so that probably makes it easier for you to kind of maintain that demeanor, right? Correct. Yeah. And then so Sorry. let me take so next you had the unique experience after this of actually sharing a huddle with Tom, right? You went over to New England. I think we've been, they've been talking about that for a million years and finally they pulled the trigger and brought you over. Is there something like when you got there that you were like, oh yeah, that's that's what it was. What what makes him different? Is it his leadership? Is it his preparation? That's the thing, it's not one thing, it's a lot of things. It that is? Makes him yeah. What he is. Mm. Like, it's a culmination of so many great things, and he, the way he approaches the game, how focused he is, you know, how diligent he is in his work, his communication between the players, how technical he uh, is too, right? Yeah, everything, you know, he's he's down to the, you know, framework of everything: eating, sleeping, right, recovery, 
it's uh it's a, a way of being for him type of thing so it's like you know being up close and you know being able to play with him was an awesome experience and learning and just seeing you know from bird's eye view you know why he is what he is what's the difference it's between pretty- being uh i mean do you feel like players can be over prepared and not loose, or do you like to be a little bit of both? Because I know, you know, Tom Brady is completely overprepared and loose. I mean, how do you find that that balance? You know what I mean? Well, that's the thing. Like, when you do something um, a thousand times, you feel comfortable with it. Right. When you do something yeah. 10,000 times, you feel really good about it. When you do something a million times, like, it's like second nature. Yeah. So, it, mm-hmm. like, that difference. And Mo, I always thought, because you played a little bit of quarterback, I tell everybody, you are not a receiver, you are a football player. You know what I mean? Like, you see the game different from your experience. So I thought, I bet you and him probably vibed super well, right? You see the game. Co- What's up there, sweetie? Who's that little one? Guess. That's amazing. Who's that little yes. one? <laughs> oh, I never, I never met that one. How, how are we doing down there? Tell, yeah. tell us about who we got. This is my daughter, Meliana. Uh, amazing, Hi, Meliana. Dude. She's beautiful. Hi, Meliana. How are you? Adorable. Who does she got? Oh, Kansas cool. City or 49ers? <laughs> I don't know. Who you got, man? Who does she got? Who's who's the goat? Mahomes or Brady? <laughs> Yo, Mo, that's who that's Mo? That's, that's our question. Who's Mo. the goat? The question for you. Scary, it's like, like I was on the other side and I saw, you know, when you when you go from all right, you go from being on the other side of Brady, then you go into Jordan Brady, you're thinking, all right, Brady's gonna Brady everybody, and then you see Mahomes do it. Yeah. To Brady, you're like, yo, what's going on here? Like, let me ask you a question. Do you put Mahomes? Do you think he's almost into the category of Tom Brady? Where, because you know they're starting to put him in the category of goat. Is it too? Is it premature, or do you see it? Do you see it trending that way? And also, we're just curious. I mean, it's just you just gotta you just gotta watch. I mean, you, you gotta see what he does because. It's all about what you do, not what we think you can do type of thing. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Like we're, we're in the business. Like, I got to see it. You got to show me. And he's showing. So as long as he continue to show, that debate is going to continue to become something that's of who do you think's got a Who do you think has got a stronger roster, the Niners or the Chiefs, straight up? Uh, For sure, the Niners. Yeah. No, no question. Yeah. The voices. Yep. Loaded. Yeah, those guys. There's not one weakness on either side of the ball with those guys. Yeah. All pros, Hall of Fame like trajectory loaded. guys everywhere, right? Folks be sleeping on Brock Purdy. Now. Oh, that that's what I, that's what I've been saying. Nice, that's what I've been saying. That boy, that boy Roxy, nice. hey, that's the second coming. Of, <laughs> hey, see, that's what I've been saying. That he's the second coming of Joe Montana. I'm telling you, dude. I'm telling you. That's a that's a bold statement. Not a bold <laughs> like, statement. He's, he's nodding hey, his head. Also, Mo's hey, nodding his head Mo, to it. Mo, uh, Mo, I've been telling these guys, dude. I've been telling these guys. If if Brock Purdy wins, he's going to be the best quarterback ever in the first two years of his of his career, because he's beaten all these guys in this playoffs and everything. We lose Mo. We lose Did Mo. I get too hyped. No, he's still. No, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, you're oh, there. Okay. We, we, but I'm saying, oh, Brock okay, Purdy, yeah, his first two here? years, he's not, he's been pretty amazing. Am I right? He has. I'm. I've been witnessing, and I, you know, I've just been, you know, watching and just trying to see, like, man, you know, is he gonna, you know, stumble? And he just keep getting better and better. He looks poised. He takes those hits mm-hmm. in the pocket. Eight. So Mo. Better and better. How do you see it going? How does the game go? Yeah. What do you got? I don't know. I think it's a close game, but it's like a, a pretty like good scoring game. Give us the score. Like, uh, Most might bets. Be like 30, 31 to 28. Type hey. of Ooh, uh, no, don't go. Hey, hey. <laughs> who, who? He's going to go Niners. Be like, I want to go Niners. Oh, Muhammad. Yeah, I heard my heart my right mind, there, brother. Muhammad, let me ask you a question. Artist, my mind tells, my mind tells yeah. me, Pat my heart. Your you mind is telling you that. Like, but my like, body is It's like, don't bet against Tom. But, like, I know the Niners are going to do what they do. That's why I'm like, for sure. Know, them, them, my, my boys, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. No question. Like, yeah. it's, it's their redemption for them. For sure. Do you think Taylor Swift's a distraction, or is it just all a bunch of fluff in the NFL? That's just that's just what y'all think. <laughs> yeah, you. Yo, man, yeah, but Mo, you, let me Mo. ask you a question. As a Thank player, you, as an all-star like, player people, like yourself. Funny, it's all about perspective. You right. know what I'm saying? It's all about people's perspective. 
right? So the ability to block out distractions is what got these guys, got you to where you are. Like, you don't care exactly. about that once you're mm -hmm. on the field. Stop that. No, <laughs> like, it's 11 on 11. That's it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Ready. But, Mo, I want to I bring it back to you right now. Coming out of college and going into the draft, um, getting on the Bengals, did you – and I, and I kind of oh, read yeah. your story a little bit. Good call. Did you – look at Chad Johnson as a mentor growing up and did you eat McDonald's during your workouts? <laughs> uh, I, I actually ate McDonald's in high school, for sure. Like I ate McDonald's in high school and in college, but like once I was like, got to leave, that all stopped. <laughs> hey Mo. <laughs> I can't do that no more. That's hey, I'll call. tell you yeah. what, man, you were like a gold card member at Chipotle though. Yeah, yeah I was. You darn sure was were. I mean, if, if we, we were at hey. IMG and if Mo wasn't That's... around the group, Mo was at Chipotle. Understand. That's what I'm having for lunch right now. <laughs> I love you, bro. Hey, hey, I love you, dude. I love you. You're the man, bro. Chipotle's got to <laughs> sponsor you, man. They do sponsor. Don't they sponsor you? Hey, you you, 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 you sponsor. Hey, you're right? sponsored by them. I was at yeah, a you're time, the man. but not long. Yeah, you're the man. Long, yeah. Well, we'll lead the charge in trying to get that back for hey, you. Hey, Muhammad, is it true that you <laughs> got prank called the night? The night you got. Was it true you got prank called the night but you got drafted? Did someone prank call you? It was you, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I got you. I got you. Hey, hey I knew so it was you. I, I heard that story and I loved it. Did you, when the Bengals actually called, were you like, "Shut mm -hmm. up, leave me alone"? Like, were you skeptical or were well, you kind of no. like? Well, I missed the uh, I missed Coach Lewis call when he yeah. called, and then the receiver coach had to call me. Nice, Coach Urban. Nice. And did you find out who? Like, did you find out who made the initial call? And is he still with us? Nah, I, don't really oh, I, don't, I don't really care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't care, man. <laughs> Good old man. Well, Muhammad, hey, we had a good time talking to you, man. We uh, congratulations on hey. the little one, uh, Chris. You got one more. Just call? before we let you go, brother, talk, talk to everybody about what you're up to now, man. Plug something. What do you What do you got I going on? I tell you about the cool stuff I'm doing. Uh, I got a sports complex that I'm involved with. Yeah, you do. It's called Legacy like, Sports Complex, and it's uh, and what's it called? Growing pretty legacy sports complex oh yeah 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 for mm, sure awesome for sure it's awesome growing, growing pretty quickly it's uh based down in georgia we're gonna branch out in different states yes. fairly soon and but we have um a lot of different um elements that's involved with it we train kids from five years old all the way to grandma and grandpa 90 year old grandma and grandpa i love and, it and if we you've have, watched um, mo work before you know how meticulous he is this guy was so polished, and I'm telling you, I was down there with a killer group, and this guy was NFL ready the second he got on campus and as ready as yeah. I've seen a – dude, I mean, from release work to ball catching to yeah. everything. Oh, no, I don't this tell This kid is, is different. So if hey. you go into legacy, you're in good hands, I promise. Hey, Mo, we want to thank you so much for coming on the show, man. We wish you the best of luck with legacy. How do people find you? Plug it. Give us all your socials. Throw them out. Uh, shoot, my Instagram is Muhammad Sanu, simple. Um, my Twitter is Mo underscore 12 underscore Sanu. That's as simple as that. I don't really do anything else. Well, thank you, Mo. Hey, we had a good time talking to you, dude, and have a great day. And let's do this again sometime, huh? Let's talk, sure, let's talk yeah. after Super Bowl. Mo, you're the best, dude. Thank, thank you. you Mo. Appreciate Peace you time. always, bro. Thank you, Mo. Appreciate y'all having me, y'all. See you, brother. Peace. Awesome. That was awesome. Yeah, Mo's good. Mo good Sanu. Mo's there he good goes. People. Where is he right now? He's in Atlanta. He's in Georgia. He's in Georgia. He was with okay. the Falcons, and that's where he kind of set up shop. I think. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, but I wonder. I wonder. Does um, do you think Mo bets on the game? Probably not. Huh? No. Well, Mo, like I said, well, Mo was with the 49ers for a little. So I think a lot of the roster. I, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and err on the side. That's probably why he's betting the 49ers. Of course. But he was with the team, so. Right. I don't know. Maybe. Do you think he was threatened by your Chiefs? Um, probably was. Right. By he the way, is that was. a medium? How small is that thing? It's an extra medium. <laughs> <laughs> it's an extra medium. <laughs> it has to be tight. You're popping out of that thing. It has to be tight. I don't want to give these guys things to grab when I'm a couple yards away. No, I get it. You should see my high school jersey, dude. It looks like something out, it looks like today. something out of varsity blue. You should have worn so that old. today. <laughs> Such an old guy. Blue. Speaking of uh, lots and lots of gambling going on because it is Vegas, it is the Super Bowl. Uh, there is projected right now in the Super Bowl. Ray, you're our gambling sports guy. Um, sure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Ray's got a parlay on this show. Uh, <laughs> I got an under over guy. <laughs> yeah. um, right now in Vegas, they have projected twenty three point one billion dollars. The amount That's of money insane. expected to be bet on the Super Bowl. Ray, what's your take on this? And uh, what are you what are you going to bet on this? Ray, what's your what would be your your take? Yeah. I mean, you have a ton of celebrities and um, 
coming out. You know, I think Dave Portnoy just threw uh, half a million on the Chief. Uh, came out yesterday. Ruby Rose, who's a rapper. I don't know who she is. Right. But she bet there a million. There was a new one, isn't there? Uh, yeah. There, there's like old... Meg Thee Stallion. <laughs> yeah. Body yachty. Sexy red. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something. Like that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Phenomenal. Same Lyrically. Great. Malik, who do you like? Amazing. Sexy red or uh, Meg Thee Stallion or... Who the fuck is Juby Rose? Rose? Ruby Rose. Neither of them. Definitely not sexy red. <laughs> no, why? Is she too wild for you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just feel like she gives people of her demographic a bad image. Or a Malik. Or gives them STDs. A hey, Malik. <laughs> she's got some pretty poignant <laughs> lyrics. Uh, any any choruses of hers you you can drop off the top of your head? Drop off. Yes. <laughs> there is. Malik's Please like don't, man. We want to stay on. <laughs> don't do that. I'm yeah, just dude, fooling around. What are you talking about? We're going to try to get canceled. You're going to ruin, <laughs> ruin his career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all you can say is body, yada, yada, yada. That's about as good we doing that's make the stallion there you have it uh all right ray what do you but, do you have any bets on this um so if, if you're looking to make some money i feel like you should look at player props um all right i i, I want to take a, I, i'm i honestly think christian McCra uh, mccaffrey is yep. going to have more uh more than two touchdowns um nice. i think that's a good prop to have i think that's uh at a plus 180 right now so okay. if you're looking to make some money they're always uh feeding the ball to him so I think uh, it's going to be a high-scoring game, and I feel like that's a good uh, player prop to bet. Um, Chris, what do you, you? What would you? What, would you? I, have, you're not a betting guy, though. right? I'm not really a betting guy. I just know that at this point in his career, if Mahomes is getting points mm -hmm. more times than not, go make some money. It doesn't happen often. Uh, it started off. I think the line was three, which if they were giving Mahomes a field goal, I think would have been crazy. And as right. soon as that came out, uh, the money started going crazy to them, and I think it's down to one and a half now. Still can make a little bit of money if you believe the Chiefs are going to win the game. So uh, I don't – obviously, I don't – I'm not a pro. Yeah, but I think it's that's probably where I would right lean. Now. I think more people are throwing uh, cash over to the Niners. But it start, it's it's almost even. It's almost a pick em at this point. Yeah. yeah. I think, um, I think it, it'll change. Possibly the line will change as the game goes gets closer. But yeah. we'll see what happens depending on injuries or depending on if uh, Kyle Shanahan. And it's in Vegas, too. Kyle Shanahan's not uh, too wasted to coach the game. You know, <laughs> there's a lot of elements to this. <laughs> so who knows? Uh, speaking of, let's go for predictions of the game. I'm going to start with Malik. You don't have it on cards, but that's okay. Malik, what is your prediction for the game? And is there a crazy prop sort of bet? For the people out there that can go off the top of your head. I know we just threw it uh, at you, so. Yeah, I saw one. Uh, there was like a, if uh, there's like a Taylor, no, uh, alien invasion. <laughs> like, it was like 0.000%. But if That's you, a real thing. Yeah. I love that's that. It's a legit well, thing. What's, what's it at? What? I'm betting on that. Yeah. Throw it yeah, by the way, yeah, what's the percentage? How much money can you win on that? Uh, there's one, Bovada, uh, they were talking about on PBD Podcast <laughs> earlier. Bovada had like if, uh, if Taylor Swift announced she's pregnant during the game. I think that was like wow. a 0.0% chance, 0.01% chance of happening. But That's funny. It's just some wild, dumb, crazy bets. But like for my pick, I feel like Pat Mahomes is going to do it. You got it. Like What's your final score? Typical matchup. What's that? What's your final score? Final score, I say they win by touchdown. That a boy. Okay. I like okay. where your head's at, Malik. Uh, right. Give us the juice. <clears throat> Oof. You know, it's going to be a good game. I think we can all agree that it's going to be relatively high scoring. I think it's going to be a good battle back and yeah. forth. And I think it is going to come down to the last couple minutes of the game. And be, to be honest with you, I do believe it, it's a 50-50 game. But I'm going to have to go with the 49ers, Ooh. guys. 34-31. I think it's going to come down to a field goal, guys. Ooh. All right. All right, we got 1-1. One, one. We got Malik. And we got Ray. You got the Niners. Uh, Mano, I know you're not happy about that. <laughs> it's going to be a good game, though. Mano looks like you just smelled a fart. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look. <laughs> Thank you, Thanks Jorge. The, where did that come from? Look at from? that. No, that's our guy. He, he's a, when he's awake, he's the best. Um, oh, yeah, he's great. Good dude. <laughs> Mano, oh, come on, give us the juice. What are we you going prop bets first? No, let's go. Let's go we'll score go first. Score. Then give us All prop right. bets. So I think obviously it's tons of talent on both sides of the field. Um, I think it's kind of clear where my where my uh, loyalty lies. Yeah, Niners. I am no. gonna go. <laughs> A million to zero, oh, Kansas what? City Chiefs. <laughs> That's a long game, Chris. That's actually, I'm lying. No, for real. I what a diehard Chiefs fan. When, <laughs> when Mo came on, uh, and I probably couldn't hide my excitement, Mo knows football. I was jacked up about the score. I just got to go in the other way. 31-28, Kansas City Chiefs. Mahomes' legacy is locked. I like that. Okay, for me, for uh, Uncle Braids here, we have um, for who's going to win the game, I've got 28-24 Niners. Yeah. Yep. There you Niner. have it, people. Keep drinking your haterade. By the way, I didn't want the Niners for personal reasons, but you know what? I just see Brock Purdy having a good game. Uh, also, I think Brock Purdy throws two touchdowns, and uh, Debo has uh, Are you going to bet on that? I have a touchdown as well. What? Brady's bets? 
You All right, fine. Yeah, Brady's lock it bets. in. Lock it in. Brady's, Brady's bets. bets. <laughs> we'll put it in post. Yeah. We gotta put a disclaimer up now. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah right. And now we're gonna get dinged. Well, yeah. Our first strike. Uh, <laughs> thanks. And then here's my prop bet. My prop bet. We have T. Swift gets proposed on the 50 yard line after the game. After they lose. So, so hold on a second. It's all yeah. about T. That's Swift. impossible. Oh, you wait a minute. Oh wait a God. minute. So you just. About her. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. I thought you were just saying that the Chiefs are gonna win because there's no like way. There's no way he's proposing after a <laughs> after loss. Dude. So man, because why not? Who doesn't love a little theatrics? Funny, it's a it's I'm a little CSI. It's a little. It's, funny. Uh, it's theatrics, dude. Why not? Amazing. What they call the- it entertainment. And there you have it. T Swift proposed the 50 yard line after the game. Eat it, dude. Incredible. Eat it. Uh, all right, moving on. This is uh this has been fun so far. Are you guys having fun? I'm having a great yeah. time. Great. great. Time. Super uh, Bowl. This has been fun. Yeah, our last uh, last segment that I, I love. It's one of the best that we have. It's called the Good, the Bad, and Do We Care. Um, my good is Lions GM Brad Holmes calls out the media um, after they all kind of beat him up for the picks that he had. So can we play it, please? But when you look back at those picks, and those picks were not welcomed by many in this room. You know, Dave, you want us to pick quarterback. You didn't want us to pick Panay Sewell. You know, people didn't want us to wait to the fourth round to draft a wide receiver. People didn't want to wait on a – Derek Barnes to develop, but every single move was intentional and was made with intention. You know, back in 2021, we did not have multiple ones. We did not have multiple twos. We did not have four picks in the first 100, you know, now we did have that and we used those wisely. You guys didn't agree, but we use those picks wisely, but we didn't have, we had one extra pick in 2021. We had a comp third. That was Ify Melifonu. Carlos, I know you said that that was a miss. Nah. But that was Love the only that. extra. That's good, dude. That was the only good. extra pick. So Talk what I'm saying reporters. is that's not required to sustain what we built going forward. So um, how does it make you feel when you make a decision that isn't well received by everybody but still standing on your two toes and going forward? I mean, just make it everybody or? I love it, dude. I kind of wish they were in the Super Bowl. I really do. Because this, this would be even They're not going be, anywhere, man. <laughs> They're going to be around for a while. I think so, too. But I think yeah. this would You can cut it. I think this would have been even sweeter because I know how hard the Lions have worked. I know how hard Dan Campbell's worked. You know, and, and I mean, kudos to the, to the Lions. And also, kudos for calling out these stupid reporters that also are full of shit most of the time anyways. So. Yeah, and just a little insider trading. Like, you know how players and coaches say we don't listen to, we don't read, we don't... Crap. Bullshit. Crap. Yeah. This guy's got receipts from the day. He probably wrote every one of those guys' names down and knew when Panay Sewell became an all-pro. Oh, he's yeah. He's a stud, and he's oh, a yeah. cornerstone of the franchise now. He was piece, just going to... Baby pew, Thor. Yep, pop them all off. Yep. Uh, side note, um, I just got this from my brother. Kobe Bryant... Did you know it's Kobe Bryant Day today? Did you know that? Is it really? They're going to unveil a uh, weird statue with, he goes, yeah. they're going to unveil a weird statue with snakes and shit. Yeah, I wrote. knew they were putting a statue up. They've been having what? people vote on like what they think it's going to be, like a bunch of his iconic like poses and stuff. The jersey pull or a fadeaway. Also, oh, shout yeah. out, yeah, shout out to Kobe Bryant, but also we have merch that is dedicated to Kobe yes, Bryant. Yes, we do. With yes, Valuetainment. Yes, we do. With Patrick yeah, Bitt-David. make sure you guys check that out. Yeah, it's for sure. Killer. Yeah, for killer. sure. We'll You're have a love discount it. code for you guys uh, yeah, next sure. week and all that good stuff if you want to buy merch and all that. But we'll pull that statue up. Anyways, I thought that was interesting. I didn't know it was Kobe Bryant Day. Uh, shout out to Kobe Bryant, you know, RIP. But what do you have, Chris Mano? What do you have for your good? My good is um, Travis Kelsey dur- during media day in front of the stadium. And look, it just goes with the theme of the day for me. Uh, it's Red Friday. I'm super excited. Travis Kelsey just got booed on a level you don't hear often. Really? And he's he- embracing it fully. I know it's got him locked in. I know it's got him ready to play. Hyped so up. Niners fans... I appreciate you. Thank you. We bask in the hate here in Chiefs Kingdom. Sure. And I think Kelsey's going to have a big game for it. Do we have the video? Play it. Play it. And uh, it's, it's been asshole. See that? <laughs> well, How many of those booze do you think come from Taylor? This guy's right like now, a pro man. wrestler. He feeds off of this. Look at George Kittle. I love George Kittle, too. Love him. Yeah, I love he's the so likable, too. Right? Travis Kelsey's turning heel. Like, like, 
I'll give him a reason yeah, to get yeah, mad. Yeah, WWE wrestlers, out. straight up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are. I love that. I love that. It, it, it gets me hyped up, dude. They feed off that stuff. Oh, that yeah, energy. Yeah, it's all energy. Yeah. It's yeah. Energy. George Kittle and him, you guarantee after this, no matter what, they'll be a in the WWE. Crushing the beer. Yeah, well, crushing yeah, so the beer. They'll after. be partying <laughs> like no other. I could promise you that. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, Ray, what's your good? What do you got? So I got, there are rumors flying around, you know, that there's a possible 165 pound division going to be announced at UFC 300. Hmm. Now, there's a bunch of speculations with it. I mean, the current card is nothing in terms of lackluster, but there's there's a puzzle missing. Um, there's a piece of the puzzle missing at 300, and this could possibly be it. Um, and you're looking at the star power here of Conor McGregor being the possible... The main last t- piece. The main, the main ticket but didn't for he already that say, Didn't he already say Michael class. Chandler? Oh, but they said we're going to fight at 168, not 165. One, one, well, it was going to be 185 oh, at middleweight. One. But here's oh. the thing, though. There's, in the division, it's going to cause a lot of disruption. So the UFC knows what they're doing. Right. They're, they're not playing checkers here. They're playing chess. Right. This is going to be a long-term play. Now you've got to look at it in perspectives. You're now bringing in another weight class. You're now cutting off the 170 weight class, Walter weight, and now you're adding 175, making a 10-pound difference going all the way up until heavyweight. So you're, if, if it is true, they need star power in that division, and the only star power right now is Conor McGregor right. to open that you know, weight division. Isn't Sean O'Malley so, in the 300 though? That's that's huge. No, no, that's 299. No, oh. but he's a, he's a one he's a one uh, 35 pounder. He's bantamweight. He's the bantamweight champion. That's a, yeah, but I'm saying he's in the card though. But no, he's, he's in, on the card, correct. But in terms of the division, got you. you need star power. So now you're bringing in people. You know, you have stacked. It's the most stacked weight class in the UFC at lightweight. You have Islam Makachev, Charles Oliveira, Justin wow. Gaethje. Uh, you know, Poirier's in there, right? Uh, yeah, yeah you, you have up- upcomers uh, um, coming in as well. You have Rafa. You have have all these people now you're bringing in people from 170 yep. you know yeah Shotkov, Bilal you know Leon Edwards the champion uh, Colby, Colby where's he gonna go so Correct. it's all possibly could merge in and make a super and, class yeah and isn't it easier too for them to it this is kind of like a default way to for them to drop Connor into a championship fight too because he lost a bunch of fights Correct. at 55 so to throw him in the 55 championship you know uh, picture is, is like almost impossible. It looks like he's getting fa- uh, preferential treatment. This way, with a new number and a new weight class, they can kind of start from a blank canvas and kind of what a better way for them to start than to have a but, but championship all, Conor McGregor back. Right? But also, now you have to look at terms of longevity of Conor McGregor. Is he here just for one fight champion and deuces, or is he going to stick around? You know, Conor has so much money that he could pretty much call his shots. He could tell Dana yeah. White, I'll, you know, he yeah, could start I'll, I'll, by I way, could fight and then fights once, beat, you know, you know. If he wanted to, he could start his own UFC. He could do what he wants. Right, but also if he, okay, so, last question, then we'll move on. But um, if he loses, is he, is that it? Is he done? I mean, it's really hard to say with him because he could he's still a draw. He always will be. He'll yeah. be the number one draw I mean, no he, matter what. The, the, the comeback fight with Michael Chandler will break the top ten, I believe the top five in pay-per-view by, uh, buys. So the only fight I could see him, say Chandler starches him, you know, shout out Mike. Um, I, the only thing I could see him doing is a possible trilogy with Nate Diaz Absolutely. for numbers. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. So and you guys it, would want to see him fight Nate Diaz again? Would you, Malik, want to watch that? No, nah, I, I wouldn't either. I'd watch it. I don't give a Anyone's shit. Anyone's gonna watch, watch McGregor. It. I know I'd, people that know dude. don't even know fighting, yep. and they go, "Oh, McGregor." It's, yeah. No it's, one knows anything, and, you know. And, and what UFC does an awesome job of is the buildup. Yeah. So you might not be excited about it now, but five days of embedded and three weeks of watching these guys talk crap to each other on the major news networks, how much they hate each other, it's, it'll get people yeah. the, the interest that you need to, to tune in for I sure. I don't know. I feel like I've seen it, but I guess we'll find out, which we I'm will. looking forward to. Uh, let's move on to the bad. My bad. Uh, I looked this up. It, this is actually true. that This chick actually got this. This is the bad. Antonio Brown. This chick got Antonio Brown's face tattooed on her cheek. I'm like she's kind of pretty, but Mano doesn't think she's that pretty. I think she's, no, I think she's disgusting. If you know <laughs> yeah, who she is, she disgusting. gets exponentially closer. <laughs> Do you know about Can you every, the clip? Can you pull with it up? every interview and about ten Ray minutes thinks. of her talking? I feel like this is oh, Ray's chick God. right here. Ray, this is right Ray, up your alley. Do you know the history of this woman? Ray, this <laughs> chick, <laughs> I can, this girl this right chick, here. Right? If you hear That's her disgusting. speak for ten seconds, oh dude. Oh, but I don't even see any ink touch the face. Wait, but I can I can tell it's real because she's grabbing someone's hand. God, Your life's cool. ruined, though. Well, so is her lips. Yeah. I mean, what <laughs> I mean, do you mean, bro? She's I, mean ruined, I don't think she's really worried about it. Well, I mean, <laughs> when your whole life is predicated <laughs> upon, like, what dudes you've been with uh, and how many you can compile. It's she's not, not I mean, even dating him, right? 
Vicente. Oh, no. <laughs> you don't know the history of this woman. You all know do you? who this woman is. She no, no, she's no. not much of a dater. I should have looked. I should have listened. Who is she? Doesn't yeah. date players. She dates teams. Malik, go ahead. Yeah, like like Chris was saying, she yeah. dates teams. She's yeah. she's famous for like things that aren't like necessarily. I, I know good. who she is. Like, but go ahead. One is she lied about OBJ like. Mm-hmm. OBJ used the bathroom on her chest. Oh, that was like a oh thing. that's her? Yeah, that's her. Damn. Damn. Yeah, yeah, we should get like, her on the show. No, don't uh, do that. that and, she also, and reenact it. Great. There goes. She also battled the entire <laughs> Suns' uh, top seven yeah. after oh. the game. No wonder, why, hey, no wonder why they yeah, Did you say battled? Yeah, yeah no battled. Battled. That's amazing. Shit the bed. <laughs> her father must be proud. Wow. Well, that, that's my bad. Man, oh, you have this one's actually hilarious. Oh, Tell my the, my the bad is awesome. So obviously I'm a New York kid. Our hometown station is WFAN. And um, this morning, I mean, this week on their morning show, their producer booked Randy Moss for uh, <laughs> yeah, a Super Bowl dude. thing. And they asked him, what does Randy Moss want to plug? And, and the producer goes, for whatever reason, he wants to plug something with horse racing. Now, if you know, <laughs> there's a huge horse racing expert named Randy Moss, and they booked the wrong one. And we've got a great clip of the morning show host, Greg Giannotti, saying... You booked the white Randy Moss? <laughs> so, I mean, I know we have that. I think we can probably cue that up if we have so it. It's good. hilarious. This is straight out of a movie. Something that would horse tail, right? racing. Really? He's very into horse racing. You got to get one racing. of those, Brady. <laughs> Are you sure this is the right, this, the, yeah. Not this the other Randy, Randy Moss. Moss. the wide receiver, not Randy. Is there another uh, yes. Randy Moss? There's a, uh-oh. There's an announcer, uh-oh. Randy Moss, <laughs> who is into horse <laughs> racing. Who is into horse racing. <laughs> Please tell me that's fake. The, I, no. That no. so <laughs> awesome. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, no. said, I saw in the request that Randy would like to talk about blah blah blah. Also, anything NFL related. You're fired. I'm a du- I'm a double check that. Well, That's Al Dukes. He's on the show all the, the time. Sports so sports announcer or the horse racing announcer. He also he used to work for the NFL <laughs> Network. Stop Come it, on. dude. I swear. Hey, listen to Gio. Hey, listen, hey, listen, listen to what he says. Listen to what he says. He says, <laughs> this, is oh, Jesus. "This is horrible. Right. This Jesus. is what Mark Chernoff's talking about. <laughs> you know, <you're> lazy ass. <laughs> you're not following, doing any follow through. I don't want to sound like I'm complaining." Because we have a great setup and everything is great, but I can't catch a break when it comes to some of this stuff, right? Like Dua Leap is in New York when we're out here. I think we're getting Randy Moss. We're getting the white Randy Moss. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say Dua Lipa? Yeah, yeah. That's just red flag to right check there. The guy <laughs> if you would be interested Dua in Lipa. current NBC sports like broadcaster and former NFL network broadcaster and reporter. <laughs> that's right. That's you that's booked that's the white Randy Moss! <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> you idiots! First of all, <laughs> that is it. Like, like, That's no so way. great. Moss is coming here. <laughs> no wonder they oh were so God. excited too. The, the person was like, "Oh no, he will definitely be there." Oh my oh God! Oh my God! Listen, oh. In all fairness, this person has got to say, just to be clear, this is not take the top off the defense, <laughs> Randy Moss. Look, I, oh, this is way, embarrassing. By the way, I do like the broadcaster, Randy Moss. He's a very nice right. guy. He loves. All right, horses. we got it. We got it. <laughs> How do you mess that up? How do, I mean, you can't. If you're, I mean, you just can't mess something like that up. You go from a white Randy Moss that talks about fishing. I mean, really, bro? And he brings that up, and he's like, yeah, we're going to talk about some fishing. You're like, interesting. I know Randy Moss likes to fish. Right? Or no, how, yeah, right? Like, yeah. how do you, the like, guy how? that's Randy Moss has to know that that's not the Randy Moss they want to talk to. They totally. have like, that Randy Moss. The they have the horse racing Randy Moss on the station, like, every year around, like, the Belmont. So right, but I'm, I'm sitting there going, Randy Moss likes to fish. Or you're like, okay, maybe he likes horse racing too. So maybe that's just like something. I guess when they said right? the reporter, I guess when they said the reporter and not the NFL Hall of Famer, it probably should have like set the light off. Totally. Yeah. All right, Ray. Moving on, Ray. What do you have for uh, your bad? For my bad, um, I, think this, <laughs> I think this is actually pretty funny. I think it's cute. Malik's gonna it's pull very it up. cute. And I think uh, it's, Bar- it's actually <laughs> dead on. Barack Purdy looks ki- very similar to Lee Harvey Oswald, the guy who assassinated Kennedy. Um, if you pull up that picture, it's just a strange... <laughs> like, look at the- they very, look like that's his yeah, father it almost. It is very similar. Spitting images. It is very but similar. But there's a take on this. Could he be the his, guy who assassinates yeah. Patrick Mahomes on Sunday? Oh. As to who, yeah, hey. exactly. Boo that man. <laughs> Boo. Right. I think we just found a new clip yeah. for you. <laughs> so wow. we shall see. I like that. All right, so moving on to the uh, do we care? I don't know. This is when I saw the new Law & Order is back. Do we need this? Again, I know we talked about this last week with Godzilla. 
Fucking all <laughs> your that favorite. Shit. Why do we care? Do you guys care? Like, what if they brought back like Will and Grace? <laughs> Who's still like, watching well, these networks? I know, that's what I'm my my you can't come up with other uh, shows. Why, why do hospital? we need this? My next Law and Order episode will be my first Law and Order episode. You've so. never seen Law and Order? <laughs> not for yeah. a second in my life. And he saw I mean, one. You saw all of them. They're yo, just in different cities. Yeah. Back in the day, though, like you know, if there was nothing else to watch, you kind of got into it. But I mean, I feel like it's something like uh like a retired woman would watch at home all day while I'm at you know totally. Like, yeah. It's like, like when you saw Mash, right like when you saw Mash, sick. like when you were like little and you saw Mash come on TV, you saw that helicopter come over the mountains and you're like, it's time to go to bed. Yeah, it's time to- <laughs> that's that's law and order. Or you're, you're, dun, 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 dun. you're like yeah, yeah, bedtime. Or or up as a kid and you just see the George Lopez show come up, you just turn off turn off the TV immediately. <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on. Mano, what's your do we care? Let's wrap this up. All right, my up. do we care. Bud Light released their Super Bowl ad this week. And it's a 180-degree transfer from their woke Dylan Mulvaney partnership ad. Uh, is it time to move past it, or do we even care? They're, like, the ship has sailed. What do you guys think? I don't really care. Uh, Bud Light is Bud Light. It tastes like piss regardless. Uh, there goes our sponsor. But um, <laughs> There never was a sponsor. I don't know. You know there never was a <laughs> Yeah, I know. Uh, if we had a sponsor, it would be like White Claw. Um, yeah, truly. So. I don't know. Malik, Vault. what do you think? Do you care, Malik, no? or no? No, not at all. I mean, this is just another example of like Bud Light. Just, I think all these corporations like they just try to jump on whatever wave and pander and do all of this. Yeah. So I think that's just them facing their own consequences. Well, you know what it is? That. It's that they they, they really kinda, have no values. Yeah, like, yeah. They just they're, 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 they're loyal to the shit. dollars. So I think it'd whomever. be really funny if they had like a Super Bowl cake and they're like back to America and then Dylan <laughs> Mulvaney comes out and he's like surprise, bitch. <laughs> oh yeah, like, they no! pissed off all the rednecks. No, this thing. that's the best Super Bowl commercial ever. <laughs> Anyways, all right, moving on. Last one. Do we care, Ray? Take it home, please. Uh, I mean, I can answer for everyone, but supposedly, allegedly, Kim Kardashian is dating Odell Beckham Uh-oh. Jr. Here She's already dated the entire NFL and NBA roster, so do we care? So that's We don't. <laughs> that's the end of his career. Yeah, there's Reggie Bush, yep. Is that what you do <laughs> if, your career is, if your career is going down? Do you just start dating Kim Kardashian? Yeah, it's not looking good for Jesus. him. Jesus. Yeah. What a look. Is that Dennis Jeez. Rodman? I can't tell. Yeah. Doesn't it look like Dennis Rodman? <laughs> what is that? That's not North Korea. That's not good. He looks like he just got that out of like a Hollywood souvenir shop. Outfit by Stone Cold Steve Austin. Totally. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, we're ending on that. Fantastic, guys. That's that was awesome. a great show. Uh, Chris, tell the people what you're up to this weekend. We're going to watch Super Bowl. Tell them your socials. They yeah, know, I haven't even crazy. figured it out yet. I don't know if we got something going on. Uh, I will be watching it somewhere. But, you know, when it's your team in there, like, I don't want to be amongst the chaos. I want to actually be able to watch the game. I got my lovely fiance coming into town, so I'm excited about that. Love it. Uh, Mano Steel on Instagram. Mano Steel 17 on Twitter. Check me out. I love to engage. I will talk back with you. So let's do it. Great. Ray, hit him. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to watching the Super Bowl. I think we'll probably figure out something to do. Yeah, let's uh, go. I'm going to crush some food from Mr. Shrimp. Um, and, you know, you guys can follow me at Ray Sherwood 1. I'm excited for this Sunday. Yeah. Malik hit him. Uh, I'll probably keep it simple. Uh, I enjoy watching TV from my home. I have a nice flat screen TV. So <laughs> I just watch the Super Bowl from there. You can catch me on Instagram at It's Me Malik. And if you like this hat, you can go to ValuetainmentVTMerch.com yep. and get you a hat. Jeremy, Looking put it up. spiffy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. That's been our show. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's been our show. I've been your host, Brady Matthews. If you guys have liked what you've seen, please subscribe and click right here on Valuetainment Sports. Click on the mouthpiece on YouTube. We have new episodes, reels, stories, crazy stuff with all of us doing crazy stuff and putting it on the YouTube uh, Valuetainment Sports page. Uh, Please tell your friends. Click, subscribe, all that good stuff. Also, give it for my boy Travis Shaw that does all of my graphics. Thank you, Travis. Well done, Travis. Give it for Pastor Ben David. Give it up for Vault. Give it for Christy. We're working hard. And Jorge, guys, we love you. And we're going to see you Monday. We're going to recap the Super Bowl. Let's get it. Have a good weekend. Let's go. Don't call off. Throw all your money. (laughs) 